Somebody told me I sound like James Earl Jones, and that wasn't so bad. So. Our secretary has been sick, and so our service is all on the screen, so today is the first time we're able to use our televisions, which is great. And uh, So for the announcements then, just to point out that uh, on Christmas Eve, the uh, 7 o'clock at Emmanuel, no, that's tonight, I'm sorry. Tonight is 7 o'clock is the Advent evening service. And we're looking at Christ in the Old Testament. We think of Jesus only being, or Christ being, only in the New Testament. But he's in the Old Testament. So we'll look at that. And then on Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock is, is worship at St. At John's. 6.15 at Emmanuel. And 7.30 here. And then 9 o'clock on Christmas Day, we have worship here. And... Uh, I think that is most everything. Is there anything else I need to point out? Tuesday night is council meeting, yes. And then we've also been asked to pray for the call committee. They are interviewing somebody this week, so keep them in your prayers. And we also are asking people to consider donating to Lutheran Disaster Response. Uh, for the pe that helps the people down in, uh, that are victims of the tornadoes. And as almost always, we point out that 100% goes to help the people. So the administrative costs have been taken care of. So 100% goes. So we've got a bucket in the back. It's also, we forgot, it's Noisy Offering Sunday. So we have a, bu a bucket back there for uh, Noisy Offering. Is that about cover it then? Okay. So... It's the fourth Sunday of Advent as we near to the coming of Christ. I invite you to please rise and let us join together with hymn number 643. The words are on the screen if you would rather just follow that if you know the hymn. <laughs>
seated as we continue with the lighting of the Advent candle. Looks like we don't have a reader. I'm trying to save my voice. Can I pull a volunteer or two out who could read? Yeah, we do too, so if both if you help too, that'd be great. There's a reader one. You'll need your bulletin. I don't see anything up here. Okay. Oh yes, you don't have a bulletin. Okay. No. You might have to stand there and read off the screen. This is strange. Yeah, Alan, here, he's bringing the microphone over. Thank you. Okay. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Advent is a time of waiting. We wait for God to send divine love and light into our dark world. How does this happen? God's light comes through Jesus, who became a human being just like you and me, so that he could show us the way back to God's divine love and light. Purify us, O God, by your daily visitation, so that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes, he will find in us a mansion prepared for himself. We thank you for this time of waiting, we thank you that our time of waiting for Jesus is almost over. May we wait for the light of the world with the joy of anticipation for Christ our Lord. A reading from the, a reading from the prophet Micah. The Lord will choose one of your people to rule the nation, someone whose family goes back to ancient times. The Lord will abandon Israel only until this ruler is born, and the rest of his family returns to Israel. Like a shepherd taking care of his sheep, this ruler will lead and care for his people by the power and glorious name of the Lord his God. His people will live securely, and the whole earth will know his true greatness, because he will be, bring peace. We continue to wait for the coming of Jesus. Each Sunday during Advent, we have begun in the dark, then we have lit candles. Today, we light all four candles. This makes you realize how much you appreciate a secretary and all the work she does. Each candle that we light reminds us that the light of the world will soon come to us in the human form of Jesus. Now, at the end of the end of Advent, all four candles burn bright with the hope of God who will come to us. Tonight, we will celebrate the birth of our Lord. We will finally light the center candle that symbolizes the Christ child. lessons later on. Thank you. And then I'll have you read the gospel lesson too, please. I 
ask you to please rise as we confess our sins using the words uh, found in the scripture, in the bullet. Let's try it again. In the uh, hymnal, or as I say, it's all on the, it's on the screen here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth of God is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment for self-reflection and then we'll make confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now hear the good news, that Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn number 52, Your Dear Little Ones, Dear Lord. together the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sins that bind us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Please be seated as we continue with the reading of the lessons. Thank you, Daryl, for reading. The, pro the prophet Micah, having pronounced judgment upon Judah, speaks of a future shepherd king who, like David, will come from the small town of Bethlehem. Ephrathah refers to the area around Bethlehem. This king will restore Israel and bring peace. New Testament writers understood this passage to be referring to Jesus. All who shall Spirit and with faith. 
In a little Elizabeth's inspired reading and marriage song of praise, we hear of a saving God who remembers, scatters, lifts up, and fulfills all things. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Then Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings. The child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why, this is, why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped with joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken by her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God our Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on all generations, will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the angry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he had made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. seated. Well, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We love those favorite Christmas songs. We learn them when we are little and somehow those words are ingrained in us. We hear the tune and the words, at least in the first verse, they're just there. And those words help us to celebrate God's action in our lives through His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mary was just a young girl. Many believe that she was only 13, 14, maybe 15 years old. The angel has announced that she will have a baby, even though she has no husband. She is visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who is also going to have a baby, whom we will eventually know as John the Baptist. Mary breaks into song, a song possibly from her youth. Her song was the words of Hannah, 600 years earlier, a woman who had prayed for a baby. And her promise to God was that if she would have a baby, she would dedicate him to the Lord, taking him to the temple where he would live. And she had that baby. That child was known as Samuel, who would go on to be a great prophet, and whom God would use to choose the first kings of Israel. When Elizabeth's baby leapt in her womb, before Mary and the Son of God whom she carried in her womb, Mary broke into this song similar to the one she had learned from the time she was little. If I could have that next slide, please. The first half of what we know as the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations shall call me blessed, for the mighty one, has done great things for me. Holy is his name. God the Son, who has no limits, placed himself within the confines of the womb 
of this very young woman. And everything is turned upside down. A young woman normally did not travel alone. An elderly woman did not look up to a young woman. And God did not limit himself to a young unmarried girl. As Moses was raised by a princess in the house of the Pharaoh, we would expect at least that for the God's son. But God has chosen to do the unexpected. This lonely girl is blessed, and she is looked upon with favor by God. Now the next slide. And the second half of her song looks beyond herself now. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. The next slide. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Looking through these words, her celebration recognizes that this one who has, cho has chosen to be limited within her womb is coming not just for her blessing, but for the blessing of all. This child, Jesus, comes to bring God's salvation to all who believe in him, all peoples of all nations, of all races, of all tongues. Today in our prayer of the day, we pray, stir up your power, O Lord. And like Mary, we are blessed because of this child coming into this world. Our hearts suffer as well when he dies on the cross. But unlike Mary, who's watching her son die, we agonize because his death is for our sins. That is why he's coming. That is the purpose of his birth, to suffer, to die, and on the third day rise from the grave. And when we look at that, when we really look at that, we cannot help but break out into the songs of joy and celebration, the songs of our youth, joy to the world, silent night, the first Noel, O little town of Bethlehem, and a slew of others. We must also be like Mary and not keep the celebration to ourselves. This Christ child is not limited to the confines of our hearts or even to the confines of our lives. We pray, stir up your power, O Lord, that we may go out to share the good news that God's Son has come into this world. Share the good news. Do it in what you say, what you do, and what you think. Forgive when you've been hurt, and make that a Christmas present to another person. Be forgiven when you think you cannot be forgiven, because God forgives. Love the unlovable, as well as allowing others to love us. The gift of Jesus, God's Son, to us. Serve as God calls us, not according to how old or young we are, but according to God's calling. In other words, excuse me, in our words, our actions, and even in our attitudes, this Christ child will become known throughout the world. And the world will know what we mean when we talk about putting Christ back into Christmas. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which is beyond all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Angels from the Realms of Glory.
invite you to rise as you are able. And our, our confession is from Luther's small catechism. The second article that is about Jesus Christ and, his, and, the, and we'll use the meaning. And uh, also note, in the second part of it, it'll say, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from eternity. That's what we're looking at this evening, that Christ has come from eternity. Let us confess our faith and hope in Jesus Christ, who is our peace and joy. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I point out again that offering plates are in the back. Noisy offering and special offering for the tornado victims. We continue with the prayer of the church. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those who are in need, and for all of God's creation. Almighty God, you are mindful of the humble state of your servants, but also of our jealousy of bigness. Help us and all people everywhere, so that we who are so easily impressed by rank and worldly honor and wealth will instead lift up those who are fallen under sin, failure, or weakness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Savior, in this and every land, bring down from their thrones those of influence, prestige, and fame, and all who oppose you and your Son, all those who grind other people under their heels, and lift up the humble, Lord, in your mercy. Visit our sick, including Ken Spear, and all those who are sick with COVID and flu, all those that we lift up from our hearts, we include Tomasa Cook, the people in nursing homes, our shamans. Touch them with your presence and touch them with your healing, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our country and its leaders, Lord, in your mercy. Shepherd your flock so that we are not quickly scattered <coughs> and bring in your other sheep, that there will be one flock and one shepherd. We bring to you the leaders of our church, especially Bishop Eaton and Bishop Hollis. Cover them with your grace and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who further taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The 
Lord look upon you with all of his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I see a number of visitors. I would love to greet you, but I think you would love not to greet me this morning. So uh, I'll just uh, wish all of you a blessed day and look forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve. Our sending hymn number 633 in the blue hymn, if you're using that, Awake, Awake, and Greet in the Morning. for the coming of Christ.